Welcome back to the IBM Storage Summit. We're here live in our Palo Alto studios. You know, the hallmark of any modern cloud company, even one that's say 112 years old like IBM, is its ecosystem. And we're going to dig into that ecosystem with Karen Shu, who's the IBM VP of Storage Ecosystems and DJ Singley, who is the CTO and enterprise architect at Mapsys. Folks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on to our live program. Yeah, it's good Thank to be here. You. Hey Karen, let's start with you. you know, we always talk about you know, your algorithm and you know, what you're trying to solve for. What are you trying to solve for as it relates to the ecosystem for IBM storage customers? Well, our storage ecosystem is really an extension of IBM. I would say that me with my ecosystem partners like DJ, we are working to solve the same exact problems that you maybe just heard Scott and Sam talk about. Mm -hmm. Making from a storage perspective, the data available, making it available quickly, making sure it's secure, making sure we have the right governance and enabling our partners to really deliver a complete solution um, that, that may or may not include additional uh, products beyond just the storage. So DJ, tell what's, what's Mapsys all about? What's your sort of unique approach? Yeah, great, I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. So Mapsys is a, is a premium or a platinum IBM business partner headquartered here in, in central Ohio, serving the entire of the United States. So we are a, an, a, a real big IBM proponent. We only sell IBM and we really plant our flag with the IBM storage portfolio. Um, it, it's not only about speeds and feeds these days, right? I think the speeds and feeds conversations are, are over in storage, quite frankly. We're now on what else can the storage do for us? And uh, that's where this whole cyber resiliency and the cyber vault strategy come from with IBM. It's it's the next level of, of what storage can do for you and your enterprise. Yeah, I was going to say that it seems like cyber resilience and being you know built into the product from the beginning is a key advantage of what and why you go to IBM storage. What are you hearing from customers? Because I think you know everybody leaned on disaster recovery, uh, having been in that industry myself, I, you start to look at it, it doesn't solve all the problems, especially when you get into this unstructured world. What are you seeing from customers and how is the cyber resilience built in and helping you? Sure, sure. So. Couple of things here. So I, I would say that before COVID, right, there was no such thing as as a, as a breach, as a ransomware attack with any of our in any of our patch. However, since COVID, we've had a multitude of customers come down with the COVID cough and unfortunately a <laughs> a little bit of the ransomware attack here and there. And uh, it's it's a scourge. It really is. And that's where the next uh, you know the next part of IBM storage strategy, the cyber resilience, comes into play. So Mapsys, unfortunately, has had to respond to, I'd say probably eight or nine attacks wow. since COVID started. And it always goes the same way. We, we land our team of engineers on site and they get back to work uh, re-architecting the environment and bringing the customer back up. And we always, again, recommend the cyber vault and cyber resiliency features of IBM storage and other products wrapped around it. Right, it's not just IBM and things like Racktop Systems, uh, Cyber NAS, and other things like uh, perhaps uh, key radar or Splunk, other things like that, right? So IBM is a very big pivotal key of all that, but it's certainly not the only product. So once we get the customer back up and running with things like safeguarded flash copy, which is a way to take a logical air gap of your data for use in restores, um, you really have a much more resilient architecture for the customer. Additionally, we need to save off any of those, um, those encrypted data sets for forensics purposes, and, and that's what we do. We typically work with law enforcement or other firms at that point uh, to, to do that, to do that forensic analysis while also getting the customer back up and running fast. Um, safeguarded flash copy in 2023, that's table stakes. And if you're not doing that type of a, 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 of a, a security um, with your storage, then you're just not hitting the mark, I think. Karen, IBM obviously has a massive portfolio, a lot of different capabilities from, from product to services, et cetera. How do you think about where you leave off and the ecosystem picks up? What are those dividing lines? Or maybe, maybe you try to make them seamless, but I wonder if you could discuss how people should think about that. So we do really, like I said before, view our ecosystem partners as an extension of IBM. Um, I don't think it makes sense for it to be 100% seamless. Obviously a lot of things are from a skills perspective, um, from a, a product offering solution building perspective. Um, but 
our partners come in and they add tremendous value. So there is a distinction when you start looking at providing the whole solution. If multiple vendors are needed, if additional skills are needed, if additional services are needed, that's our partners really come in and they come and go above and beyond what IBM is offering to build a more comprehensive solution. So it's it's both seamless from one perspective, but then also very differentiated when you start looking with the, the additional value that the partners can bring to the um, to our clients. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I want to circle back around because I think that, DJ, you hit on a, a pretty good point with the customers and what they're doing and how cyber resilience has become since COVID really, you know, has to be there. Also, though, I, I'm, I'm sure given the economy and what they're seeing, you know, the value of flash and how that cost benefit value has to play out. What are you seeing there about how they balance, you know, cyber resilience versus cost and value. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's cost is certainly a, a very big thing, really, it really is. Uh, but also I think the easy button is something that's vastly overlooked. Other competitive solutions out there, we see them all, aren't easy. It's the customer has to install something somewhere, configure something somewhere else, and then learn how to use it. IBM really brings the easy button to the market with their cyber resiliency strategy especially the features that are built into IBM's flash systems. And I'm talking about, again, safeguarded flash copy and other features like TPI, two-person two uh, authentication, and then lastly, uh, ransomware um, um, detection uh, features that are now built into the arrays. So these are really important points, right? They're built in, they're, there's very little for you to do other than take the machine out of the box, put it in the rack, turn it on and start using it. Perhaps you'll need a, a little bit of a how-to session from your friendly neighborhood business partner. I can recommend a good one uh, just to figure out how to use it. And uh, after that, you're off to the races uh, with all of IBM's latest cyber resiliency protections. So it's pretty great. I wonder if you could both comment on the business case and, and as to whether or not that's changed. I mean, you've talked about a number of situations or you've alluded to where people got snake bitten with ransomware kind of you know, during COVID or even post COVID. Of course, after you, you know, the horse leaves the barn, you close the door. So the business case has traditionally been, hey, we're going to get hit. We're going we're gonna to lose money or have a, have a business impact. And it's a, sort of the probability of that occurrence uh, and, and the degree of impact. And of course, we know that the probability has increased dramatically. The frequency has increased dramatically. Uh, the impact you know, may or may not be concomitant with that, but has the business case changed from, you know, sort of fear, uncertainty and doubt, as you better do this CFO, or are there other sort of business value attributes that you can get from cyber resiliency that people should include in their business case? Would you like me to take that? Absolutely. Sure. sure. Okay, yeah. So um, I, I think there's a, there's a four pronged approach, right? <laughs> to to looking at the business case. There's certainly a lot of fear, I think, out there with a lot of, a lot of customers um, going through this, um, but the, the, the cyber vault strategy really plays in four different areas, right? Number one is immutable data copies, which I think it's, it's the easy button, everybody can get there. Number two, it's a proactive monitoring. That's a little harder, but for the most part, we have uh, products like IBM Storage Insights that'll help you monitor your storage a monitor for, for malware and whatnot in the, on the block level storage, very, very, very good. Um, other products such as um, Splunk or IBM Curator can come into play there. Um, then there's the, the testing and validation of data, which I would only really say that's more of an enterprise grade type of, a, type of a solution where we actually take those copies and make sure each one of them is good. And if it's not good, then that's when we have a, we have a real, real hard time with it. We go back and we try to figure out what happened. Right, and then lastly, it's the it's the party, it's the rapid recovery, it's the holy grail of why we're doing this in the first place. So you know, we, I think as a customer looks at this and says, "What does my budget look like for storage or cyber resiliency?" You can kind of pick and pick the pieces of of these four pillars out and say, "Which ones can I afford? Which ones can I implement now? Or which ones can I implement later?" I I really feel at this pro at this point in time. Every single sale that we make, every single one includes the first two. 
right? So you're going to take advantage of all of those features and functions in the IBM Flash systems. You got to understand one thing too. IBM bundles all this stuff together. It's not like you're going to be nickel and dimed for a feature code that you didn't, you didn't buy because you didn't buy it, right? Um, so it's all there. You should use it day one because, because why not, right? Uh, especially when you're working with competent business partners that can show you uh, a quick demo of how it's used and how you should use it. And then you're off to the races with it. So I look at it as not really as a, as a CTO or CIO looking at this saying, hey, I don't want to buy this. It's some extra thing. I'm going to get hit. Uh, you know, I should rely on my backups. It's more like I bought this new storage array and this new storage subsystem. It's included with it. I should leverage it because it's going to help me in the future. Karen, thank you for that, DJ. Karen, mm -hmm. how unique do you see IBM's approach relative to the competition? And maybe you could give us some details as to why. Um, from a so from a storage perspective, when you look at the products that we bring to market, and DJ's been talking a lot about cyber resilience, been talking a lot about flash system. Um, and that really is our key differentiator, our ability to recover from a cyber attack in hours is something that nobody else can do. We've got inline uh, data corruption detection um, that was recently announced and um, being rolled out and available is something that nobody else can do. So we've got these really key pillars that are there to help our clients be prepared and to identify a breach and attack immediately and then be able to recover very, very quickly. I wonder as well, DJ, you know, one of the concerns that I hear from customers is this, the, the insider threat. Um, and so you, you can, if they want to really get you, they're going to get you, you know, it's like, it's like the hit man, he's going to, he's going to get you. So, but there's many, many things you can do to, to increase the costs of the bad guys. And that's sort of your, your, your goal here is make them go somewhere else that maybe mm -hmm. isn't as, as resilient. So what, I, what I'm interested in is what's the best practice? Do you recommend sort of setting up separate business processes for uh, th things that, you know, remote vaulting and things like that? Is it sort of, or is that too complicated? How are customers approaching uh, uh, that, that insider threat? Yeah, I, I think this again is sort of a, a multi-tiered approach based on how large the customer is, right? An enterprise customer, has certainly different, uh, you know, different worries than a, a mid-sized or an entry-level customer, right? Enterprise customers are going to have everything scripted. If if this happens, do this, and these employees do that, and you have multiple times a year that you'll do a DR test, and you'll test all of these these features here. Um, the smaller customers, again, they typically don't think like that. They they're they need to be agile. They just don't have the time to think like that. So I'd say, you know, they should, you know, really lean on the business partners more to help them with the, the cyber vault features and, and all these uh, cyber security features to help them leverage them appropriately across their enterprise, because they're just not going to have the recovery plans available to them. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I think uh, the smaller customers or mid-sized customers, when you do have an event, before you do anything, just stop, right? Stop and, you know, don't accuse anyone in your organization of doing anything. I think you should stop, take a big deep, big deep breath, and then call your business partner who has dealt with this stuff over and over and over again of what the next steps should be. So, um, you know, uh, there's other things we can do with insider threats as well with other technologies, um, which, which, are, which are quite capable, um, like Edward Snowden type CIA stuff. Uh, and one of our favorite products is to, to leverage um, uh, Racktop NAS on a IBM flashtop system that can help with uh, theft of files and it uh, does a nice job. And we, 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 we do that often as well. That's part of our you know, cyber resiliency um, um, assessments and, and, um, and, and how we help customers when they fall into these traps, so. Yeah, and, and I, I think what's interesting is it's not just cyber resilience, right? And I think Karen, uh, when you look at it, you have ecosystem partners all over the world at this point and you have data privacy and PII and all kinds of different issues that are really driving some of this technology. How does that work, you know, even outside of the US and what, what kinds of demands are you seeing from the ecosystem back to IBM? Well, our partners and our clients both want to be confident that IBM is able to meet any sort of regulations um, that are put in place by a local country. So my responsibility is in the Americas, um, but we work a lot with our, our um, 
our counterparts overseas. And so we actually learn a lot here in the US from what's happening over in Europe and other parts of the world. So I would say that, you know, we have to make sure that we're taking all of that into consideration when we're developing our products, when we're bringing things to market um, so that our, our partners and our clients have the confidence and the comfort level that we'll be able to stand up to to any of those threats. Yeah, and, and DJ, what, what are you seeing from the customers? Because most customers, especially at the mid, mid size to larger, they have to deal with this because they have a European footprint and GDPR or they're in California with CCPA or Virginia with VCPDA, I believe is what the acronym is for their Virginia yeah. data privacy. <laughs> but how are you seeing that impacting because they have to take that into consideration and with cyber resilience. So putting everything in one place and trying to protect it just doesn't work. So what are you yeah. seeing from your customers? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we do a few things here and, and we work with some uh, managed service providers that have to go through all of those letters yeah. <laughs> yearly to maintain their certification. So it's pretty tough. And I, I guess I'll take this down to two, um, I think easily digestible uh, pieces, right? And the first one is um, encryption is a really important thing to do and it should be required for every business everywhere. It's practically free on flash systems or any other IBM technologies. And if you're not using it, you really should. There's two ways to manage encryption that I think are very easy. I bring this up because I see even mid-range uh, customers having trouble with it sometimes, right? Number one is you can use a key manager, right? That's, that's important for those customers that have the skills to do that. But number two, I think was just as important is that you can use a USB key right in the back of the machine to store your encryption keys. Right, and uh, that's the easy button because now you don't have to worry about a key manager. Some of these mid-range customers, you you just you know they don't they don't have the skills in their data center to maintain this key manager over five, six, seven years. And I, you wouldn't believe the phone calls I get after six years of saying, "Hey, how do I upgrade this key manager?" Also, what's the password to it? <laughs> so there's things like that. But the second part of the the answer goes to you know with the IBM technology stack, you can take those. Um, you can take your cyber resiliency up into IBM's cloud or other clouds by taking those snapshots of your data and migrating them into AWS or IBM cloud uh, for safe storage, if you will. Um, the kind of cool thing you can do is, is now that it's up in the cloud, your data can migrate anywhere you want in the world, number one. And number two is you can bring up that data on an IBM flash system software appliance in the cloud anywhere you need to. So that would you know, s satisfy some of that GDPR um, and compliance issues of where the data has to live or where it can't live, right? So um, for instance, we have customers that are replicated from the United States data centers here in IBM cloud all the way over to Germany, right? And that's fine. Or they need to keep it within IBM cloud and the United States and for, for various reasons. So um, there's a solution for anything or any problem that you're looking for with IBM, uh, we've done it. Guys, we're almost out of time, but I have to ask you, I was interviewing somebody uh, that got uh, attacked. They went through uh, a, a recovery. There was a ransomware attack. Uh, and, and I asked this individual, were you afraid you're going to get fired after this? And he said, absolutely not. And DJ, it was interesting to hear you talk about, don't start pointing fingers, don't accuse. When you think about some of the experiences that you've had with customers, uh, love to, I mean, if you have a favorite one, you don't have to mention them, but, but things that, that you learned, uh, not only from the technical standpoint, but the culture, and if you could leave us with maybe some advice for the audience. Wow, okay, yeah, the, if I could give you a quick anecdotal, you know, story about these customers, right? And then, I'll, then the advice, right? Well, yeah. Advice I think is already there a little bit, right? But, uh, so the, the first one, right? We had a large enterprise um, engineering firm, unfortunately get hit, and all of their engineering data was encrypted. That was bad. So we brought in um, IBM Flash Systems to replace their, their competitive arrays while we took all the data in the competitive array and handed it over to the FBI, right? Uh, we got them back up and running in about a week and that was pretty good for them. They were back manufacturing product uh, by that next weekend. That was good. So we're, we're able to do that uh, right, pretty fast and pretty efficiently. The second one, second customer, they, um, they were using IBM Safeguard and Flash Copy and they did have an incident and the attackers got in and the very first thing they do is they look for honeypots and backups. A honeypot is always your NAS server. Couldn't get into there for whatever reason, but they destroyed the Veeam backup servers. No more backups. That was that was pretty tough to watch, right? Not only did they destroy the Veeam backup servers, but they destroyed several parts of some of the VMware clusters. 
Luckily for them, they didn't hit any of the data. Not all the data was, was safe. So it was a very easy restore for them for the most part, bring up your VMware cluster again, and, uh, and then get back to backing up all your data, all right? So really wasn't that much of an incident. Also safeguarded flash copy and IBM systems were safeguarding the rest of it. They couldn't get any further than that if they wanted to. Um, this customer has been so excited and successful with safeguarded flash copy. They're now implementing TPI, the two person integrity I talked about earlier and they're going to be implementing the, the IBM um, ransomware detection on block level, which is, which is really cool technology. And guess what? It's all free. It's all free. That's the cool thing. It comes with the machine. It's, it comes with the, the latest version of the firmware and they can easily, easily install it. So uh, what, is, what was common between these two uh, events? Well, the one thing was, is instead of panicking, both of them called us. Hey, you're my business partner. I just had this event. Can you help me out? What do I do next? And uh, and we we walked them through it because we've been there. And you know, uh, my big thing for customers is don't overreact when you first get attacked like this. Um, you take a deep breath, call someone who has done this before. If you don't have any uh, defined procedures to go about doing this, like larger enterprises might, but call someone who's done this before. Don't start restoring data because you may restore data from uh, that still is infected, and then ten hours later you're going to have the same problem. Right, and that's going to be bad, really bad. Or you're going to overwrite the data and you can't give it to law enforcement. Now we have no idea or any forensics analysis or trail on what happened to to your enterprise and what could happen to others and other enterprises. So um, my big takeaway is call your best friend, call your business partner. I'm so glad we were able to get those stories in guys. I wish we had more time, but th thank you DJ and Karen. It's great to have you on. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. All right, keep it right there. More action live from the IBM Storage Summit. We're going to talk about data resilience at the core. There's a premise here that inside the IBM Flash systems, there's some IP that gives the company some competitive advantage. We're going to test that. Be right back. <laughs>